Hey, I am Nathan, and in this video, I am going to show you the entire process of printing out an army thanks to Highland Miniatures. And if you end up liking the video and you learn something new, consider subscribing. Being able to 3D print your alternative Warhammer army has never been so easy. With the number of miniatures available these days on the platforms such as Patreon and My Mini Factory, we are now spoiled for choice. Ramon Belmonte is the sculptor of Highland Miniatures, and after a discussion, he would like me to show you the new range, the Sun Empire. The Sun Empire would fit well in Warhammer Fantasy as an alternative empire army. I am using the Alagu Satin that I feel has been dialed in nicely. Everything I printed from Highland Miniatures did so without fail. That is always great to see when a sculptor has nice pre-made supports that work which can make the printing process just so much easier. Well, it goes great when you don't fuck it up as I did. Printing loads of plates full of miniatures, mistakes are bound to happen. I didn't notice that I had put the build plate on before I started printing. So as you can imagine, I had nothing actually printing except for what was stuck on the FEP sheet. Luckily, this is quite easy to fix. Most resin printers these days have a vat clean option where it will cure the first few layers and make it easy to remove. Yeah, so I think this is actually pretty cool. This is kind of um, reminiscent of the Griffin Riders, like the Griffites and all that stuff you'll find on Warhammer Fantasy, but in their own style. Right, so it's on. This is going to take a while, as you can see. I've got ridiculous amount of stuff. Yeah, yeah, 20 of these, 20 of them to do. So <laughs> this is a pain in the ass because this is such a small plate. You don't want to overcrowd it. So you get the UVs on everything. And then I've got to flip everything as well because I really should um, try putting some tin foil underneath and all around the box actually. So that way it just bounces around everywhere. Um, but I would like to get another wash and cure station that's a, a lot bigger, especially for these big projects because it's just gonna be too much of a pain in the ass. I mean, this is an episode in itself to cure. <laughs> all the stuff I've got to cure. Sanding the connection points that I was going to glue down helped out a lot. Did not take as long for the super glue to adhere. Have not used the super glue activator as of yet, but it would probably help out a lot here. Now that they are all together, it was time to get on with the priming. But, of course, I had another problem. At some point of time, I must have dropped this cheap airbrush. Air was leaking out of it, so I tried the super glue and baking soda trick. It seemed to have welded it together fine. Frustrated, I left it for the next day. This time, I just used the trusty spray primer. It did what I wanted it to do, and it really made the army pop. Clear resin makes it hard to see all the details of these models, but now they look freaking fantastic. I plan to add way more to this army in the future. Cannons, bigger heroes, more war machines, and from what I've been told, I really need a BSB for the army if I'm going to play the game of Warhammer Fantasy. Another lesson I never learned is I ordered another cheap airbrush. I know, I never really truly learn, but this also takes money. Thanks to my current patrons, like these good people here, I am able to do purchases like this to save my ass. 
and at least this new airbrush that came in, I was able to tie it, all the models in with a Xenothor highlight and it was done for now. I will probably paint the rest up on the stream. I will leave it there guys. Thank you to Highland Miniatures for sponsoring this video. Until next time, cheers guys.